Hi guys, in this video, I'm finally going to paint my depth dragon. Scruffy Crow. <laughs> okay, so this guy's been sat on a shelf near my desk for a couple of months now. Uh, and when Johnny from Johnny Watson Gaming came around to pick up some stuff the other week, he pointed it and said, you've got to paint that, you've got to get on with it. And, and shamed me. Um, so yeah, let's get some paint on this guy. Currently he is undercoated in Halford's matte black. Um, I know it's not technically a primer, but I've never any problem with it, especially over this resin. And then it's had a dusting of the Halford's gray, uh, just to help me sort of pick out the details at these early stages. Uh, but also potentially it'll show through and give us a bit of extra contrast. Said all the back and top is the nice light color. And in all those scales uh, is where I wanted the black. Just in case I missed anything. I'm still finalizing the color scheme. But I think I'm gonna paint in blue. Um, and I'll go with this Cantor blue, I think. And I want it to be quite rich. Mm. And instead of working up to white, I'm going to work up to this pallid witch flesh, uh, which gives me a bit of a, a starker but slightly more interesting colour. And then I was going to do the bottom different blues, the darker blue on the top, and then lighter blues underneath. Uh, but I've been kind of convinced to do the underneath in bone colours. So I might see what it'll look like blended from this uh, Zandri dust that I often use for bone. Uh, but then instead of going through my normal bone shades, use the witch flesh and that should still mean that my normal bone shades will work for his teeth, uh, which I want to stand out on them to be quite stark white. Uh, however, the claws, horns, I'm going to do black, I think. And then the base, I'm going to do the same as I do all my bases, uh, just so when he's fighting any army, any given army that I have, uh, he'll match in quite well. Uh, but I'm probably going to use sort of dead grass tufts uh, and some dead leaves and things rather than the nice lush bases that I usually use. I think that'll work quite nicely. So I'm going to start this off the way I start any uh, big model, and that is going to be straight out of the park. We're going to use the Cantor Blue. I've got it a tiny bit watered down, but nothing much. I'm going to use this great big brush. And that should allow me to sort of get into all the nooks and crannies on the back here. And the fact that this is a base paint, so even a little bit watered down, it's going to give me basically one coat coverage. But I'll probably still do two coats just to make sure I get everything. I've got a nice solid colour to start with. And already I'm thinking this is the right choice, I think. And look at that. He is blue. Now, I must admit the camera is picking that up a little bit differently uh, to how he looks IRL. But he does look fantastic. And that didn't take me too long at all. Uh, five, ten minutes. Oh, there's a little bit of mist there. Now, in order for this to look as fresh as possible and not to miss anything, I'm going to let this layer completely dry, and which it almost has actually because it's really hot tonight. Uh, but I'm going to let that completely dry, and then I'll probably go over and do another even thinner layer, and I'll make sure I get any nooks and crannies. But I think I've got pretty much everything. Okay, so I've got all that base color down. And I've started dry brushing with gradually lighter mixes of the uh, the Cantor Blue I started with and the Padded Witch Flesh. And I think that's coming out quite nice and stark. Uh, I'm probably not going to do any more dry brushing on this. Uh, the next stage I do on the blue will be hand brushed. I'm going to do sort of, uh, first of all, edge highlights on the edge of the scales. Uh, but then also some sort of like um, little stripes. I don't know what you'd call it. But just on the edges. Uh, I try and sort of really highlight the edge of each scale uh, all the way down. Uh, but I'm going to leave that for the time being. 
and I'm going to concentrate on the second paint scheme underneath here. Uh, like I said I'm going to start that, I think, with the Zandri dust and go for a kind of uh, raw bony sort of colour, maybe, uh, using the Zandri dust and the witch flesh. I'm really not sure about this. Um, so this might go horribly wrong. So I'm still trying to decide just now if that's the best option. Uh, I quite like it. Oh. Uh, I know colour theory would probably put me in like an orange to put under here. That might be quite interesting. Um, but I didn't really want to, anything too warm. I want the whole thing to look kind of uh, sort of, I don't want any reds really in there. Is that working? Yeah. Yeah, that could be kind of cool. All right, yeah, we're gonna go with this. Okay, uh, so I have painted all of the underneath that I was gonna do in the Itch and Flesh. Actually, I kind of do love it. It's a massive contrast. Uh, we've painted some of the legs, um, the arms and legs, but also all of the claws and teeth and a lot of the inside of the mouth. Uh, so they're going to be painted quite differently. I'm going to paint the claws with uh, a dark brown wash to start with. And then go up in the normal sort of bone colours that I use on Menoth. Um, P3 bone colours. Um, and get them more sort of more claw shaped, more claw coloured. And hopefully that'll contrast quite well with the skin. Same with the teeth. Um, but the mouth flesh will be the same as everything else. I'm kind of torn whether or not to give all of those um, Idrum Flesh, uh, sorry not Idrum Flesh. I'm kind of torn whether or not to give those uh, Zandri Just Bits a bit of a soft tone wash. I think I probably will actually, just because I really want all these folds and things that I've uh, kind of painted all in colour to stand out a little bit more. And now I've done it, I don't really want it a lot lighter than this. Um, I want that as a more of a mid-tone than the base. Okay, uh, I have tidied up some of the blue, uh, but also put a eye paint a soft tone wash on the Zandu dust. And that has given me that more orange look. So we've got that sort of traditional contrast, I think. Okay, so I've gone round and I've highlighted all of the bottom parts. So I went back with the sandry dust over the wash and then use my wet palette and a mix of the witch flesh, which is what I'm using to highlight the top as well. And I've got that nice and bright and hopefully I've got all the colors showing through. And I've tried to like feather it all uh, where I could. So we've still got all those contrasts and I think I'm pretty happy with that. It's given me just the colors I wanted. So now it's time for the claws, I think, and the teeth. So I've got some uh, Agrax Earth Shade here. And I want these claws and teeth to look quite different from the skin. So I'm going to start with a, a healthy amount of Agrax Earth Shade. Especially in the mouth, that'll help really uh, sort of build that contrast between the blue there. Got some nice dark shadows. But hopefully also contrast it differently from the flesh parts. All right, it's the wash on the claws. And the thing I didn't mention before is that I've also done the base um, with some Gun Corpse Brown and Menoth White, which is what I pretty much always use. Um, so I've got that sort of highlighted in those couple of colors, just to bring out all the sort of sand textures and cork textures. Okay, so I have started highlighting the last highlight on the scales, and it's going pretty well, I think. I'm sort of giving this, this sort of feathery, sort of crispy highlight on the edge of each one. I think that's going to look absolutely fantastic across the whole thing. But just remind me never to do a Tyranid army. This is exhausting and a bit boring. Okay, all the blue's finally done. And I think it is looking fabulous and was worth the hassle. I've painted in some pupils on the face. Uh, and I've gone in the mouth. And I was thinking about doing this sort of same sort of fleshy, yellowy colour as the rest. Uh, but I've actually gone for corn red and then mixed with the Pallid Witch Flesh again, uh, which is these fades here. 
And we've gone for a pink, uh, fading through to the reds, which I think is looking quite cool. I might even highlight it up a little bit even whiter. Just a big white meaty looking tongue sticking out. And I'll probably uh, ram some gloss varnish or something in there as well. Uh, really make that look sort of quite juicy. And there we have all the claws and teeth done. And like as I said, I've tried to make those quite different from the underbelly. And I've gone right down to a, to a white. Uh, this is the Men Off White highlight. I had to go with the Men Off White base. And I think that's worked really well. I think those claws are standing out quite nicely. And they're a bit sort of overstuck maybe, but I think that's kind of what I wanted. I want them to, to really stand out. Like the eye is the only bit that's in pure solid white for the same reason. I really want that to be sort of quite sort of attention grabbing. Uh, I think the paintwork's done now. I'm actually pretty happy with it. Uh, as I said, I might do a bit of gloss in here. Uh, so the next section will be some basing, which I love. Okay, I've tidied up a tiny amount here. Uh, and I've had a look around for some basing materials. Um, still want to do something quite interesting with the basing. Uh, but slightly different ingredients to the rest of my Oathmark stuff, for instance. I've got some dry roots, I think they might be useful. I've got my last few uh, sort of yellowy, dead uh, tuft bases. I've got some of this brown, so it's meant to be muddy, dead grass, rather than the luscious stuff that I would use uh, normally. Uh, and then I've got my uh, birch leaves. Uh, these, this is my unmixed bag, so this is the wonderful little leaf shapes mixed in with all the other seedy bits that you get uh, when you make these. And then I've got my standard things like uh, just regular PVA. And a crappy old brush from Wish. Um, Let's start with the tufts, I think. I'm just gonna, these ones are not adhesive, so I'm just gonna put a nice, generous amount of PVA on there. Get these stuck down somewhere. And I want this to look like uh, dead bushes and what have you. Uh, so, break a little tree-shaped bit off. Get a good amount of PVA on there. And I've, just had it like growing up the edge of there, but then it's like died maybe. And we've got this curly looking bit, let's keep that. Stick that somewhere. And then we're gonna paint on some patches for the grass. And I keep this patchier than I normally would, but I wanna kind of show that it's gonna grow in on these high up on the the hills and stuff. Uh, like it's all one big bit. And that'll also help blend in some of my rockier parts with the, uh, the ground. And I'm mostly just painting on the boring bits, so if there's just sand texture and no other interesting sort of bits, then I'm just dabbing a bit of grass in. All right, now we've got dabs of glue everywhere. I'm just gonna get a nice clean bit of paper and we'll break out the muddy, oh, bollocks. And we'll break out the muddy grass that was thrown everywhere. But thankfully, mostly on the paper, a bit on my shirt. So yeah, I'm just gonna press this, take big pinchfuls, get the light over here. Basically just gonna take pinches of it and dab it in. Anywhere we want the grass. Just the same as I would if it was a normal, you know, 25 mil, 30 mil base model. Just it's going to take longer. And then once we've got all that on there, actually we've missed a bit. Yeah, but once we've got it all on where we want, just tapping it all off and we'll give it a blow. And there we've got the basis. So I'm going to leave that to dry for a while. Okay, and I think we're finished. Uh, what I've got here is some of my birch leaves and I've just poured some out. 
And all I do is I just use the tip of my scalpel, put the tiniest amount of glue on, and that allows me to just pick the leaves out one by one. And I can just place them in dots of glue I put on the base. And I've gone pretty level with the leaves all over. And at the moment it kind of looks messy because you can still see the white PVA. When that dries clear, uh, that's a nice interesting little addition to the base. And I think I quite like the way the rocks and the grass have, uh, have sort of come together, even though it's really hard to focus on it. So yeah, I'm really happy where that came out. It's a bit out of my comfort zone, uh, paint scheme wise. And it's one of the largest models I've ever painted, if not the largest. As I said, these highlights took me forever, but I think they were definitely worthwhile uh, hand brushing all of those. And now I just need to get them on the table in a, in a game of Oakmark maybe. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.